My name is Levi and I have designed and built a 3D printer of my own design. Everything is assembled and that means that there is one final step, which is putting together all the electronics and making this thing actually work. The machine has all come together beautifully and I'm incredibly happy with how it's turning out so far. I am very excited to get this thing finally working. I'm going to be using this Ramps 1.4 board and this Arduino Mega to handle all the electronics. I have some experience with this so I'm not expecting it to take too too long. But before I actually get into plugging everything in and working out the electronics, setting the parameters and that kind of thing, there is one thing I need to do. And that is to figure out a way to mount all of the limit switches onto the frame of the machine. These are the limit switches which are of course used to home the bed of the machine. I'm planning on putting all three switches in this one corner. The z-axis switch will be pressed by this 3D printed block here. And for the X and Y, I really don't know yet. I have no concrete plan on how exactly I'm going to press those switches, but the switches will most likely be pressed by the tongues that come off of these 3D printed bearing blocks. I can't mount these limit switches directly to the frame though because nothing would reach like it needs to. So I'm going to need to design some adjustable 3D printed pieces that the limit switches can screw down into, which will then screw down into the frame. I have these three limit switches and these three limit switch brackets. So now I need to mount them onto the frame. I now have all three limit switches on here, which means that everything that needs to be on the machine is on it. So now I'm ready to start plugging everything into the electronics and making this thing work. This is an Arduino Mega. This is a Ramps 1.4 breakout board, and this is going to be the display for the 3D printer. The Arduino Mega is the brains of the operation. It's what does all the processing to make the 3D printer run. And the breakout board is what's used to connect all the pieces together. This is an Arduino shield, which means that it just goes on top of the Arduino. All the pins on the bottom of here line up with the holes on the top of the Arduino. So it just presses in just like that. To connect the display to the ramps board, we need this piece, which comes with pretty much every kit that includes a uh, ramps 1.4 board. This piece goes on the end here where there's a strip of pins here and then eight pins along here. Those pins line up with the bottom female jumpers on the bottom of this connector piece. They also come with these ribbon cables. There's two on the connector, which match up to two on the bottom of the display. And each port is labeled EXP1 and EXP2, so that you know which one the ribbon cable needs to plug into. Now that the display is connected, I need to put on these, which are the motor drivers. The kit comes with five of them, but I'm only going to be using four. That's one for each axis and then one for the extruder. The ramps board has these four strips of female header pins here, and that's where the stepper motor drivers are going to be plugging into. The pins on the board are labeled, which correspond to the labels on the bottom of the driver, which is how you know which direction they should be facing. But before I plug in the stepper motor drivers, I need to put some pin jumpers on the inside of here. In between all of these female jumpers, there are some male jumpers here and they come in sets of six. You need to put three of these two wire jumpers to connect all of those sets. These jumpers are connecting points on the stepper motor drivers. They change the mode of the drivers and having all three of them like this sets the stepper drivers to their highest step count. 
For these, I believe that's setting them to 30 second stepping, which increases the resolution of your printer 32 times. So now I can go ahead and pop these separate motor drivers into place. So now the separate motor drivers are all in place. Each of these drivers has a set of pins that goes next to them, and they are labeled X, Y, Z, E1, and E0. So the motor that plugs into these four pins will be for the X axis, these four are for the Y, these four for the Z, and then E0 is what we'll use for our extruder. E1 we will not use, but you could use that for an extra motor on the Y axis, for example, or if you had a double extruder machine, then that extruder could plug into there. So now I need to plug in all my motors. I now have this whole mess of wires here. All the motors are plugged in. Now this machine has two motors for the Z axis and the RAMS 1.4 board compensates for that since there are two pin outputs on the Z axis separate motor controller. So you can plug both of them in just fine. I also went ahead and wired up a few more things. I connected both the thermistors for the hot end and for the build plate. Both of them go into here. The hot end thermistor is labeled T0 and the build plate thermistor is labeled T1. I then wired up all of the limit switches. I have three of them here. I wired the Z-axis min, the Y-axis max, and the X-axis min, which is the correct configuration for having the home position be in the top left like this. I then wired in the high current outputs, which go to the heated bed and to the hot end. The hot end is wired into D10 with these screws. For these high current outputs, it doesn't matter which end is positive and which end is negative, so they can go in either way. And then the wires for the heated bed go into D8. And with that, all of the wiring that's going to go into the ramps board is complete, except for one thing. It still needs to be connected to a power source. And this here, what this is sitting on, is going to be my power supply. This is a 12 volt, 30 amp max power supply, and I've already gone ahead and wired the cord into it. So 110 volt AC is being fed into these three points here, and out of these points on the side, I will wire 12 volts into this block here, which is the input for the RAMS board. The supply should not be enough to power this massive heated bed. The heated bed is meant for 24 volts. I can still run it off at 12, but it might not be able to heat up to a point where the bed adhesion is actually improved. But for all I know, it could be totally fine, and it could just take a little bit longer for it to get up to the desired temperature. So now I'm going to wire the power supply to the ramps board, and then after that I'll be able to get started with downloading the firmware. This is the Marlin firmware loaded into the Arduino IDE. As far as I know, Marlin is the most popular firmware used for RepRap 3D printers, and it can be downloaded from their website. Everything's open source, and there are thousands of videos on how to use the Marlin firmware. I'm not going to go over the ins and outs of how to work it. You really don't need to change any of the values except for inside of the configuration.h. This is a very long page with many, many parameters that you can turn on and off. Most of what you would be doing to turn something on or turn something off is just commenting it or uncommenting it. Since there are already so many great resources out there on how to use the Marlin firmware, I'm not going to go over specifically what I'm using. I'm only going to document the results of it. I just downloaded a test configuration of the Marlin firmware onto the machine and I made a painfully stupid mistake. When I assembled all the electronics, I set the main control board here on top of this power supply. And the bottom of the power supply has a bunch of exposed leads. And the power supply itself is made out of aluminum, which of course is electrically conductive. 
I was aware that it would be a bad idea to run this when you had leads potentially shorting on top of this metal surface. And I made a point to do something about it, but I never actually got around to putting a insulative layer in between them. So I plugged it in and of course some of the pins on the Arduino board shorted out. Fortunately, it wasn't too big of a loss. Only the Arduino was damaged as far as I can tell, along with two of the limit switches, which are cheap to replace. So now I do have this sheet of paper in here, so I've got my insulative layer, so I won't have to worry about that happening again. I've got my new Arduino Mega board and a few new limit switches, so now I should be good to try again. Configuration is uploaded. Now I'm ready to plug it in. And looks like it's working. Cool. I've been playing around with the homing sequence for about an hour now, and I think I've got it good. So that's gonna be my first official test. Prepare and then auto home. Beautiful. Great. And that'll do. I need to bring the bed up a little bit, but I can easily do that manually. But that is a honed 3D printer. I just started a test print and it's definitely doing what it should be. So far it looks great. Um, the filament is not all the way through the tube so it's not actually printing anything yet. You can see the filament ends right there. But it's looking great. I'm honestly surprised that it's gone this easily. There is one thing though and that's that the bed temperature is a lot lower than it should be. I've stated before that this bed is meant for 24 volts and this is a 12 volt power supply, so it really shouldn't be able to heat it up to the correct temperature. Um, so I might need to get a new power supply in the future, but I might be able to get away with just a cool bed for a while. This is really looking good so far though. There is filament in it and it is putting down the filament it's really bad, the quality is absolutely terrible and everything is wavy, but I think I can fix that. I'm really optimistic though. Okay, it's now the next morning and I still cannot get the printer to print properly. I spent probably around five hours working on this and many, many trial runs, and every single time, the printer gets clogged up. No matter if I change the feed rate to higher or lower, or if I extrude it by cubic millimeters instead of linear millimeters, nothing matters. In the end, it always ends up clogging up. I've spent way too much time and lost way too much sleep trying to figure out what this is, but I do think that I have finally figured out what the problem is. The J head extruder that I got came with this fan that snaps onto the cylindrical heatsink. But the wire is not very long and it definitely wouldn't reach from the head all the way down to the electronics, so I just left the fan off. Now I've always thought of a fan as really just an optional piece, but I think in this case it's absolutely necessary. So the fan snaps right onto there, which will cool the throat of the hot end. So what's happening now is the filament will not fully melt and it'll get clogged up through here. So it'll just be one thick chunk of plastic that'll keep on going up here and then up through the tube. What I want to happen is for the filament to remain solid and remain structurally sound throughout here and then only melt at the very bottom. That way there would be no space for 
the filament to get stuck. It couldn't get clogged up because it would only be melting at the very tip. And I believe that this fan should do that. The fan should cool down the heat sink so that everything inside of here should remain cool. You can even see how the head is physically separated from the heat sink, which I assume is to prevent this from happening. So if I can get this fan on here, then I think that everything might work out just fine. So I am confident that I have figured out this problem, but I'm also very tired. And I don't have the correct wires to connect the fan to the control board. So I need to wait for a couple of things to come in the mail, then I'll be able to fully finish everything up. I know this isn't quite a full electronics overview, seeing as how the machine doesn't work in the end. But I really need to take a mental break from this for a day or two. So I'll upload one more video about fixing the machine, getting everything to work, cleaning everything up, making everything finalized. And then the printer will be done. But for now, that's all I've got and I need to take a nap.